Hello everyone, my name is Eleanor Mendoza and I will tackle five ways to develop eco-literacy. What is eco-literacy? Eco-literacy is founded on a new integration of emotional, social, and ecological intelligence, forms of intelligence popularized by Daniel Goleman. While social and emotional intelligence extends students' abilities to see from another's perspective, emphasize, and show concern. Ecological intelligence applies these capacities to an understanding of natural systems and melds cognitive skills with empathy for all of life. By weaving these forms of intelligence together, ecoliteracy builds on the successes from the reduced behavioral problems to increase academic achievement of the movement in education, to foster social and emotional learning, and it cultivates the knowledge, empathy, and the action required for practicing sustainable living. To help educators foster socially and emotionally engaged eco-literacy, we have identified the following five practices. These are, of course, not only the ways to do so, but we believe that educators who cultivate these practices offer a strong foundation for becoming eco-literate, helping themselves and their students build healthier relationships with another people and the planet. Here are the five ways to develop eco-literacy. First, develop empathy for all forms of life. At the basic level, all organisms, including humans, need food, water, space, and conditions that support dynamic equilibrium to survive. By recognizing the common needs we share with all organisms, we can begin to shift our perspective from a view of humans as a separate and superior to be more authentic view of humans as a member of the natural world. From that perspective, we can expand our circles of empathy to consider the quality of life of other life forms, feel genuine and concerned about their well-being, and act on that concern. This is one of the several indicators that human brains are wired to feel empathy and concern with other living things. Teachers can nurture this capacity to care by creating class lessons that emphasize the important roles that plants and animals play in sustaining the web of life. Empathy also can be developed through direct contact with other living things, such as keeping live plants and animals in the classroom, taking field trips to nature areas, zoos, botanical gardens, and animal rescue centers, and involving students in field projects such as habitat restoration. Second, embrace sustainability as a community practice. Organisms do not survive in isolation. Instead, the web of relationships within any living community determines its collective ability to survive and thrive. By learning about the wondrous ways that plants, animals, and other living things are interdependent, students are inspired to consider the role of interconnectedness within their communities and see the value in strengthening those relationships by thinking and acting cooperatively. Third, make the invisible visible. Historically and for some cultures still in existence today, the path between a decision and its consequences was short and visible. If a homesteading family cleared their land of trees, for example, they might soon experience flooding, soil erosion, a lack of shade, and a huge decrease in biodiversity. Fourth, anticipate unintended consequences. Many of the environmental crises that we face today are the unintended consequences of human behavior. For example, we have experienced many unintended but grave consequences of developing the technological ability to access, produce, and use fossil fuels. These new technological capacities have been largely viewed as a progress of our society. Fifth, understand how nature sustains life. Eco-literate people recognize that nature has sustained life for eons. As a result, they have turned to nature as their teacher and learned several crucial tenets. Three of those tenets are particularly imperative to eco-literate living. First of all, eco-literate people have learned from nature that all living organisms are members of a complex, interconnected web of life, and that those members inhabiting a particular place depend upon their interconnectedness for survival. Teachers can foster an understanding of diverse web of relationships within a location by having students study that location as a system. 
Second, eco-literate people tend to be more aware that systems exist on a various levels of scale. In nature, organisms are members of systems nested within other systems, from the micro level to the macro level. Each level supports the others to sustain life. When students begin to understand the intricate interplay of relationships that sustain an ecosystem, they can better appreciate the implications for survival, that even a small disturbance we have, or the importance of strengthening relationships that help a system respond to disturbances. Finally, this requires that students learn to take a long view when making decisions about how to live.